Hello, I'm Andy Rice, Safety Director for Jackson Civil Engineering. The aim of this short presentation is to briefly explain the risks when working with or close to excavators and explain how these risks should be effectively managed. Mechanical excavators have been around since the mid-1800s with the invention of the steam shovel. The steam shovel used pulleys to operate the basket and arm of the machine and revolutionised the civil engineering industry. Modern excavators are generally powered by diesel and have a sophisticated hydraulic system which enable them to perform operations similar to their predecessors. What has changed, however, over recent years is the efficiency and versatility of the modern excavator. They are not just digging machines and are now used to a great advantage on virtually all of our sites, carrying out a multitude of tasks. Modern excavators are great pieces of kit and it's hard to imagine how we would complete our tasks without them. That said, they do introduce a risk of injury as these machines are extremely powerful and unforgiving. If you are struck, crushed or trapped by an excavator, the consequences will be severe. Our preferred method of working is to keep people well out of the reach of all plants, particularly excavators, and have a clear defined area of separation. There are, however, times on site when separation is not reasonably practicable and certain control measures are needed to help protect those working with or close to excavators. Excavators of all sizes present significant risks to our workforce. When they're in operation, there's a chance that those on the ground could be crushed or hit during any of the numerous manoeuvres that the machine is capable of, such as tracking, reversing, slowing or when moving the boom or the dipper arm. Due to this, we have identified that there are two danger zones around an operating excavator that must be controlled at all times. The most significant zone is the red zone. This is the immediate area around an excavator with the highest risk of a person being trapped or crushed between the machine and or an adjacent obstacle. This zone must never be entered whilst the machine is in operation. The only exception to this rule is when carrying out drainage works where additional, more stringent controls will be implemented based on individual assessment of the task. The amber zone is the area outside the red zone where there still remains a significant risk of a person being struck or trapped by the excavator's bucket or attachment and again must never be entered except in the following circumstances. To communicate with the excavator operator when a travelling excavator may put you in its amber zone or during control working when assisting with excavator operations. Communicating with the excavator operator. If you're required to approach the cab of an excavator to speak to the driver, you must remain outside the amber zone until you have made visual contact with the banksman and he or she has communicated to you that they have acknowledged your presence. The recommended place to do this from is the forward left position of the excavator's cab where the operator has the best line of sight. You must remain in this position until the excavator has been made safe by having its bucket or load grounded wherever possible, its safety lever applied and the engine accelerator or revs turned down. Only then will the banksman authorise you to enter the amber zone to approach the cab by giving you a clear verbal instruction or a hand signal such as the thumbs up. In the absence of a banksman, you must receive acknowledgement and authorization to approach the cab from the operator in the form of a positive hand signal, again, such as a thumbs up, after he has made the excavator safe in the same manner. When a travelling excavator may put you in its amber zone. As an excavator travels, the red and the amber zone travel with it. So you may be put in a travelling excavator's amber zone as it moves through sight along defined routes, especially in small sites with tight operating spaces. In these circumstances, the excavator operator must give you a clear warning of his approach, such as sounding his horn, and give you time to move to a place of safety clear of the machine's path. Controlled working when assisting with excavator operations. There are certain activities when assisting with excavator operations that require you to be in the machine's amber zone. These include, for example, slinging and unslinging loads, use of scissor grabs and excavating around services. These activities are deemed as control working and as such require a number of control measures to be in place prior to anyone being allowed to work within the amber zone. 
Controlled working is only permitted for personnel that have been briefed and authorised. If you have been, then your positioning shall be strictly as per the direction of a designated banksman, with the following additional controls observed. Whenever possible, the excavator's safety lever should be applied before entering the zone, for example when slinging or unslinging loads. Entry into the amber zone shall be for the shortest duration of time necessary to carry out the task, after which you must retreat to a safe area. You must agree on a method of communication between the banksman and the operator, such as, for example, hand signals or two-way radio. Position yourself to the side when attaching slings to the load, and whenever possible, attach tag lines. If necessary, you may guide a suspended load by hand into the required position, but this must be agreed and coordinated with the operator and the banksman. Remember, excavators are excellent items and equipment that can be utilised in so many ways to help with the work we do, but they do present significant risks. So if you're on site and you see an operating excavator, give it a wide berth and respect its capabilities. If you're working with one, then follow the safe protocols as outlined in this film.